Hey there, my name is Jonathan with Permaslug, and today I'm bringing you a slightly different episode. This is not an oxygen tutorial per se, because I have been extremely busy with client work through my agency, and what I wanted to go through today is something that I was actually adjusting, which is our onboarding and kind of scoping checklist that we use in Basecamp. Now, this particular thing is something that we review for every single client project, and we have both a written form, and I'm going to kind of go over it here in the video. Now, in the past few weeks and months, you'll probably have noticed that things have been a little bit quiet for me on the video front, and that's because the agency has been so busy. I've been spending more time on kind of the operations and sales as compared to actually spending time directly in Oxygen. So I'm going to start interspersing some more of that kind of content into YouTube, so hopefully you guys are along for the ride, but that's the kind of stuff I want to start publishing, so we're going to do it. So as I briefly mentioned already, this is a checklist that we review for every single client that we start off in Basecamp. So if we switch over here, this is the template in Basecamp, and this is kind of the beginning of the scoping section when we're starting a new project. So my goal here is to try to trigger my thought process to go through every single eventuality, and this does change and obviously is not applicable to every single project, but for the most part, it is fairly accurate. So what I want to start off with documenting is page count and how many templates are we going to have? What sort of custom post types? You know, you just start going through the list and these aren't questions I'm sitting there asking the client. I'm not saying, how many pages do you have and what templates do you need? That sort of thing. I'm not asking that. I'm using these as prompts to develop a scope of work document and then, of course, actually bid on the jobs with that particular document. So you can see there's a ton of things here. So we're talking about templates. You know, we have ACF field groups. What forms do we need? Because, you know, sometimes a site could have one contact form. Sometimes it could have 13. Does it need a membership component? What payment processors are going to be involved? Does there need to be login? Like for maybe I have clients that are homeowners associations, and so they need to be able to get logins, but they are not paid logins. So there's that to consider. Do you have e-commerce? What sort of content migration and production is going to be responsible for this? What sort of consideration do you need to give to client editability? The social sharing came up because we needed to be able to share specific pieces of content in specific ways. So I kind of used that as a prompt. It's not always something we do because generally it's just a little code block that shares blog posts. Comment capability, again, not very common, but it did come up once. And so I didn't want to forget it in the future, like I said. And when it comes to scoping, one thing that I'm incorporating lately is client meetings. So I think you can eat up a lot of your time, in particular before projects start on client meetings that perhaps aren't billed. So it was something that I became keenly aware of, and I've started incorporating client meetings into the actual scoping and, of course, consequently the billing side of things. And as we're sitting here talking, which is so amazing as we're going through this, I am uh, realizing that we need to add support hours after launch as an item in here. So this kind of goes with the client meetings. So support hours after launch in this particular case for me is basically supporting the site for the client on behalf of sometimes a marketing agency after it's gone live and after the warranty period for new content or making adjustments and that kind of thing. Or in my case, I often do like one-on-one -on -one training sessions with people that are actually going to be handling the site after we sort of hand it off. So there's something that I've been meaning to add and just kind of forgot about. Sometimes I'll stare at these sort of things and be like, oh, what was supposed to go in here? And, you know, of course, it didn't actually uh, come to mind, but now it does. So then the other one here, live edits. So that is going to be things that we're doing with the client live on like a Zoom call, which is not something to be perfectly honest, I really like doing. It puts a, a significant degree of pressure on you, uh, which is kind of part of the reason unrelated conversation as to why I'm not interested in one day websites like I was initially. Now I take that into consideration whether we're going to need to be doing live edits for the client or not. Another one is time to first proof. So of course the timeline dictates the price in some cases. And so how quickly we need to have that first proof ready and specifically or not, whether it's going to be a design proof or an actual functional oxygen proof. Another thing that's really important to consider is the freeze date. So at what point do you say this site is done and it's going live as it is and we'll fix anything else after the fact there. So that freeze date has become really important so that projects don't just drag on forever and ever. Completion date is roughly tied into the freeze date, but the completion date for us is the day that your initial fee stops, you know, sort of being applied to work and your warranty period kicks in, which may be a conversation for a different time. We also have to factor in hosting, who's, who's hosting it, where is it going to be good enough for your oxygen site and your traffic requirements, and then of course your monthly support requirements. So that is going to be important, of course, for maintenance after the fact outside of your support hours for like long-term support of the site. 
So this is all stuff that just is really for us to put together in the scoping in the very early stages of our proposals that we're sending to clients. Now, again, this is not the end all be all. Things do change. Sometimes things are insights that we sort of add on the fly that are not in this, but I hope that this particular thing would kind of help you. Then not only that, we have more. So this is kind of the planning and strategy with the client to figure out what's the point of the website. So the design methodology is sort of like, what's the overall goal? What do we need to do with the site to make it achieve whatever outcome that particular client is looking for? In the content procurement thing in this second item here, what we do with that is assign who is responsible for what content. And we're gonna create to-dos here in Basecamp to get those pieces of content and then you know, basically leave them open and assigned until that's done. Because of course, as you well know, that content can end up dragging out the whole process for you know weeks or months or sometimes projects never get done because of the content. In the planning and strategy, the client meetings is basically just scheduling out what meetings we have to have because of course I am uh, trying to run the business in such a way that most of our communication happens through Basecamp and is kind of disconnected from Zoom meetings and that sort of thing. We can do so much through a platform like Basecamp and just get work done whenever you know people are available rather than relying on meetings. So if there are meetings that are required, I typically like to schedule those and then uh, those are very clear upfront. So a few of these things, if you've gone through the growth driven design course from HubSpot, you'll notice some of these terminologies like high, medium, and low impact pages. And some of these other things down here are uh, kind of pulled out from the growth driven design. I tried a few different growth driven design packages for my clients and it actually worked pretty well. But uh, what we found is kind of a hybrid approach worked better for us. So the high impact pages are essentially what are the pages on the site that you just couldn't live without that the website could not go live with. So for most people, this is probably gonna be three to five pages. And then the medium impact ones are, are important, but they're ones that could just essentially be reskinned. They don't need to be completely overhauled, but a fresh coat of paint, maybe a few images, a little bit of text copy adjustment, and you're good to go. And then your low impact pages are gonna be ones that you could basically just have the header and footer change and nothing in the content change, and it's good to go. So we like to break out those, and most of our websites are usually in the 15 to 30 pages, so we're gonna have a few in each. High impact is gonna be five, medium will be you know, 10, 12, and low will be maybe five, something like that. All these other points here, like company mission, strategy, goals, ICP, you know, that sort of thing are all going to be centered around the strategy of the website. What's the overall goal? What call to actions do you need to have? How does the site need to be structured? Who does it need to talk to? All that sort of stuff. So that is where those things are gonna come in and they're very important. We're asking the client those on calls and then we're sort of adding it into here for our use and reference later on. The branding and design considerations is a little bit out of order here, but that is something that we like to ask ahead of time because especially if there are franchises or any sort of requirements like that that we need to be aware of where there's specific logos or specs we have to follow in, we like to know about those well ahead of time. Another one that I really like that I kind of pulled out of the growth driven design side of things is the brainstorm wish list. So this is basically a wish list of things that the site has to have to go live. And of course we'll touch on this in a little bit because I have uh, another item on that. But the wish list is awesome. So you can just ask your client, what do you want the site to do? And then you can kind of narrow it down and there's a spot later on for us to move items to that perhaps are not live requirements, but would be nice to have. I skipped over this just a second ago, but the KPIs is your key performance indicators. So that's gonna be whatever is important to that client, whether it be conversions through a contact form, phone calls, basically just page visits, whatever is important to that particular client, we like to know about that so that we can use that as our metric for success going forward. For the internal onboarding side of things, this is fairly straightforward. This is just stuff that we have to have before we can even really start the project. So we like to make sure we have all these different things like you, like you can see here. We have a bunch of different kickoff call questions, which I will show you in just a moment. I think you might like that. So this is the call that we're actually gonna have with a client over Zoom. We're gonna record it, which of course we tell them, and then we actually transcribe the answers to those questions so that we can reference them later and use them for content on the site. This has been incredibly effective. People really like it. It's way easier than having somebody fill out an onboarding form. And it's often completed so much more thoroughly than like an onboarding form would be where it says, you know, tell us about your business. And they're like, we opened in 1992. Instead, they're gonna go through their story. And that is really, really nice for us. So then of course, towards the end of the project, we have the live checklist. Now we're gonna have a separate set of to-dos that is gonna be all about design and development, but those change on a per project basis. So we don't really add those into the template. We kind of just build those out manually on the fly. 
Now with the live checklist, this is all fairly straightforward stuff, but it's things that we do for pretty much every client. So we wanna get them tag manager and analytics set up. We get them local schema more than more often than not. We can do their Facebook pixel. On-page SEO is pretty basic, just making sure page titles and tags are all set up. We of course will go through the Google search console, submit their sitemap, make sure we have 301 redirects, um, Cloudways and your DNS should handle this for the most part, but making sure you have the www to non www setup or whatever direction you want that to go to. SSL installed and activated, favicon, and then caching enabled is what we typically do to turn sites live. And then the final part of this is the master wishlist. Now this is going to come back to what we talked about earlier for that, that wishlist brainstorm section, where if there are things that the client wants or perhaps you suggest that are unrealistic at that time, they're kind of nice to haves, then what we do is move that down into the master wishlist. Once the website goes live after that warranty period, we will revisit with the client and see what of those things should we be tackling at that time, see if there's anything else that perhaps they wanna build out on the site in their monthly maintenance package that then you know we can just essentially keep growing the site with. So the master wish list is really cool. It's something that people like to talk about. They like to brainstorm and think big. And it also, of course, for you as your agency can help you generate more revenue because you have more of an idea of what the client actually wants out of their site. Now, I know I've been blabbing at you a bit. I wanna come back up here to the kickoff call questions. This is a lot of stuff that, again, was pulled out of the Growth Driven Design course, but this is stuff that we typically use as prompts to get a really engaging conversation going when we're kicking off with new clients, especially when we're developing brand new sites. This is really helpful when people are coming to us without a site at all. So you can kind of read through these, and of course, these are in the Premise Log article at the link below. But this is really, really good stuff. So if you're not familiar with how to generate an ideal customer profile, these are some things that you can kind of help generate that. And then some of these other things here, of course, you could just kind of go through and think about on your own time. But my goal here is not to say that this is how you need to do it, but hopefully you can pull bits of information out of this, kind of maybe it will trigger things kind of like it did for myself as I realized that there was a to-do missing that I needed to add in there. And you can build this out to your processes and your clients and make it fit you because that's exactly what I've done over the last couple of years is tried to mold these different sorts of resources and, and processes and ideas into what I felt was best for our agency. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm trying different sorts of content. I love Oxygen. We still build pretty much exclusively in Oxygen, but I want to branch out into more than just Oxygen Builder tutorials. I want to focus on some marketing content and some agency stuff, which is probably the bulk of my day lately. And so I'm very interested in your feedback on this. If you're not familiar with who I am, of course, my name is Jonathan Jernigan. I run Permislug and also an agency called Apex Web Solutions. If you're looking to learn more about Oxygen Builder, you can buy the Ultimate Oxygen course on permislug.com. Many of you already have, and I very much appreciate that. It's been a wild success, so thank you so much. And as always, I really appreciate you watching. I'm very excited about the future of this channel. I'm really looking forward to new types of content and pushing the channel and our agency forward. And hopefully what we can do here and what I can share with you guys will help you as well. So definitely let me know your thoughts and I will see you in a future video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.